had a lot to talk about today. What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. Can you see my face? Can you see the smile? Can you see this excitement? I am excited because I have some products from the new Lisa Eldridge Holiday 2022 collection. I have three of the eyeshadow palettes and two of the lipsticks. I'm going to be diving in in detail today, letting you all know, do I think these are worth it? What do I think of the formula? What do I think of the color stories? I have swatches. I have demos. I have comparisons. This is going to be your complete guide to the these new launches from Lisa Eldridge. And if you are new here, welcome. My name is Sophia and this is my channel focused on luxury beauty. Every single week I upload new content on all the newest releases on the market, favorites, videos, will I buy it, styles of videos. So if that sounds of interest to you, then definitely subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you. My style of review, I guess you could call it, is very thorough and very realistic. I try and show you guys in natural light what all of the products look like, what the finishes look like. I show you a lot of comparisons. I save you a lot of money and I really just try to be honest about the products and whether or not I like them. I'm a huge luxury beauty lover. So definitely subscribe if you are new here. Also, if you like this video, if it ends up being helpful for you, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It really helps me out. I'll be linking all the products also that I mentioned in this video and anything else that is on my face in that description box down below. Okay, party people, we have a lot to talk about today. So let's get into this review. As I mentioned, you guys have been going nuts over these. Even in videos where I'm reviewing other products, you guys keep talking about the Lisa Eldridge eyeshadow palette. So don't worry, I got you. I'm really gonna help you out in this review. I know a lot of people already picked up some stuff from the collection, but at the time of me filming this, all of the products, at least from what I can see, are still in stock. So that's good if you guys wanna pick up a different color or maybe you're thinking about picking one up, I can kind of help you with that decision today. If you're watching this video and you are not familiar with Lisa Eldridge, she is a wonderful, very talented, very seasoned and experienced makeup artist. She's worked with tons of celebrities for tons of different magazines and companies. She's worked for Lancome, for example. She's extremely talented and she has this really beautiful luxury beauty brand. She's been launching makeup for the past couple of years. She started off with her velvet lipsticks, which are divine. One of the other things that we really about Lisa Eldridge and her launches is that she really does have a passion and is kind of an expert in beauty history and just kind of how beauty and makeup have evolved and changed throughout the ages. So you guys will see in a lot of the releases that she has, including these ones in this holiday collection, she's usually inspired by some sort of era throughout history, maybe a color throughout history, something that was popular, maybe a historical figure and the colors that they popularize. And I think that that's really fun. I think that we really feel her passion and excitement for that. And I like the fact that when I go and I use a certain lipstick color that she launched, I kind of think of that inspiration. So just a little bit of that as kind of an intro here. We are going to dive into the eyeshadow palettes first. I'm going to get all of the swatches and the demos out of the way. And then in my final thoughts, I'm going to give you guys basically a review of all of the formulas, the color stories. We're going to do some comparisons and then I'm going to let you know if I think that they're worth it. So let's dive in. Starting off with the eyeshadow palettes. These are very expensive. They retail for a whopping $68 here in the U.S. I know it's a little bit different if you are shopping on the U.K. site in terms of pounds to dollars, but they are $68 in the U.S., which puts them basically like above a Dior eyeshadow quint. So these are pretty pricey. And just looking at my notes here, these have a 24 month shelf life. So that's pretty great. And they are also made in Italy, which is where we see a lot of luxury formulas coming from. Also, these have 0.19 ounces of product for reference. That is just a smidge above a Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow quad to kind of give you an idea of how much product that is. Reading the description from the Lisa Eldridge website, it says five ultra chic and playful eyeshadow palettes housed in beautiful, bespoke, slim, and elegant compacts. Each one contains a curation of six totally harmonious and complementary shades in my own unique, easy to blend, microplastic and talc free, high performance formulas. So as the description says, this comes in five different colorways. The ones that I picked up are Muse, Myth, and Sorcery. So those will be the ones that I'm reviewing today. And also something to note, you can remove these pans. So you can mix up the colors if you like. There's also little holes right here where you can take maybe like a bobby pin and easily pluck them out out. She also is selling these shadows as singles on her website. The one caveat that I have for you guys is that she's not selling the components. So it doesn't really make a ton of sense for me. I can see how these are refillable, but I wouldn't necessarily call them customizable because she's not selling the component. You do have to purchase one and then you can buy additional shadow shades if you so choose to basically swap out the color. So I want to point that out as well. Let's get a close up of this stunning packaging that she has for us right here. 
These are pretty lightweight. I can't tell if this is a metal or if it's a plastic. It's very beautiful. It is very luxurious. I wouldn't say it's super weighty. It's not going to be like maybe West Mantillier or Victoria Beckham Compact, for example. It's not going to be that heavy, which I think some of you might like because it's more travel friendly, but it is really beautiful. It is, you know, very luxurious. And I think she was saying that she included it with a single seam to kind of go along with the theme of her seamless skin foundation. That's the foundation that I'm wearing today, by the way. But that is kind of the story behind this. Just wanted to show you guys a close up of that. And then what I also love is that she put the shade names on the back. Thank you, okay? Because I keep forgetting what the names are. And I also like to remember which color is which formula. Speaking of the formulas, I'm gonna quickly run through what the formulas are. And I'm also gonna show you swatches and slight comparisons of each. She didn't really do this in her announcement review. So I wanted to take a second really describing to you all what these formulas are like. Starting off with the mattes. There are two matte formulas in these palettes. The first one is called Seamless Matte and the second one is called Velvet. Starting off with Seamless Matte, this is supposed to be kind of like your traditional more powdery matte shade except this has just a touch of pearl to add a little bit of luminosity. I think something important to Lisa is to have something that looks very smoothing on the eye and this is also supposed to be very easy and effortless to blend. The other matte as I mentioned is called Velvet and this is going to be more of a creamy formula. When you touch your finger into the pan it feels like there's a level of emolliency there. It's not a cream shadow it's a cream to powder matte. And she also mentioned this one looks very smoothing on the eyelids. You can also use this as a bit of a base because, because it has that little bit of creamy texture, it makes it easy for other powder products to kind of cling on to as well. Next up, we have the two metallic shades. So we have metallic and then we have luster. Let me show you what the metallic formula looks like. This is supposed to be, well, it's supposed to be a metallic. It's supposed to be densely packed, smooth with opaque shine. So kind of like your traditional metallic formula. Formula. I will compare in my final thoughts this formula up against some other popular ones that we have in our collection so you guys can get an idea of where this kind of fits along the spectrum. But I also wanted to show you guys the other metallic formula, which is called Luster. And she describes this as being still opaque, but the pearls are smaller and more finely milled. It's a more pearlized look. And I only have one Luster shade in all three of the palettes that I ordered. But from what I can tell, I think that this one is just a little bit more foiled than the metallic formula. The last two formulas are essentially topper shades. So we have the luminous formula and then the top coat formula. Starting off with the luminous formula, this has a semi-transparent base. So you definitely get some color there, but like it says, it's semi-transparent. You're not gonna get as much payoff as you would from one of the luster shades. And she also says that using this with your fingers should give it more of a wet look. This formula is typically going to be a little bit more glittery and a little bit more sparkly compared to the metallic formulas. And then the last formula is called top coat. This is very sheer. This is very transparent. It's basically just a little hint of sparkle. You can clearly see the difference there as I compare the luminous shade up against the top coat shade. The last thing that I have to say about the formulas is that not every palette has every formula. You do need to check on the website to see what's included. Like a lot of these have only velvets. They don't have any seamless mattes. I only have one luster shade throughout all three of the palettes. So that's just one thing I wanna call out. And as we go through each of the palettes, I will notate for you guys what formulas are included. And then I'll kind of let you know how that, you know, impacts the looks that you'll create. My cat Minnie really wants to be in this video. So we'll just let her have her 15 minutes of stardom. All right, friends, now I'm gonna be diving into each individual eyeshadow palette, showing you guys swatches and also doing a look with each. The first one that I picked up is called Muse. This one is very soft. It's very pink. It's inspired by the Belle Epoque, a harmonious assemblage of rosy hues. Muse is a painterly washed world of romance. If you guys don't know, Lisa Eldridge also has a lipstick that is called Muse. So if you're looking for a really beautiful, soft, romantic, monochrome kind of look, picking up the matching lipstick is a really great option. You can also use the lipstick as blush. Just a couple of ideas there, but back to the eyeshadow palette. One of the nice things about this is that it has a good mixture of formulas as opposed to the other two I'm going to be showing you. So you get a little bit of everything. Let me show you guys some close-ups of this and also some swatches. I'm going to run through each of the swatches here in order. The first shade that we have is called Tea Room. This is a velvet. It is a soft pink apricot. Then we have Vintage Mulberry a velvet, a deep plum brown. Then we have taffeta fan, I love these names, a luster, delicate pearly champagne. 
Then we have Love in Venice, Luminous Rose Gold. Then we have Cherubim, another velvet, a muted clay pink. And finally, we have Tomorrow's Party, a metallic burnished warm rose. I love these names. I think they're so, I think they're so fun. I'm just going to put on a little bit of Tomorrow's Party. Let me walk you through the look that I created with the Muse palette. First off, I dipped into Cherubim. This is one of the velvet colors, and I applied that in the crease. You guys will notice, like, these have decent pigment. They are not, like, super chalky they're not going to really blend into nothing don't forget these have a little bit of a creaminess to them so i think that does help with adding a bit of pigment especially when you go in with a lighter shade next up i dipped into tomorrow's party and i applied that all over the lid this is one of the metallic shades you guys will see here this does have some impact but these metallics, they are not super duper foily compared to other brands. I also applied the velvet shade Cherubim on the lower lash line. And then I dipped into that shade Taffeta Fan. That is the lightest shade in the palette. And I applied that to the inner corner for a little pop of shine. This being the luster shade, this is going to be the most foiled and shiniest out of all the ones that we talk about today. Then I dipped back into Cherubim using this shade a lot. And I applied that to the outer lid with a fluffy brush, just kind of creating some depth. Then I dipped into the shade Vintage mulberry and I started applying that to the outer V. I don't want this to be a super smoky look but I did want to use every shade and show you how you can kind of gradually build up the dimension of the look. At any point usually during my looks you can stop before adding a ton of depth and that could be your look for the day. I really try not to do crazy makeup artisty looks because I don't really think that's who these palettes are for. We want natural looks. We, want, we don't want to have to wear fake eyelashes with any of these. So back to the demo, I then dipped into the shade Tea Room. This is the lightest matte that they have in the palette. And I use this for blending, just kind of blending all around once again, creating something natural. And then finally, I dipped into the shade Love in Venice. That is the luminous shade. I applied that on the center of the lid. I definitely was expecting this shade to be more sparkly because Lisa was saying that these give kind of like a wet look. I'll be honest, this shade didn't really have that much impact. I kind of struggled to pick it up a little bit. It's very soft if that's what you like, but it's not going to be like those Makeup by Mario glitter shades that show the wet look or the Wayne Goss toppers. It just isn't. And I'll show you guys some comparisons later on in this video. But anyway, I applied some mascara and this is the final look with Muse. Once again, wanted to do something very soft. I think that soft looks is what this palette was intended for. Comment down below and let me know what you think of my look with Muse. Moving along, we have our next palette, which is called Myth. And Myth is inspired by the mauve decade and Victorian gothic hues. It definitely has a very royal color story. And I loved the explanation and the inspiration behind this one because Lisa Eldridge was talking about the time when basically humanity discovered the color purple and all of a sudden everyone started wearing it both in their clothes and their makeup became a color of royalty. And I think there's just something so incredibly cool and romantic about that. Like that would never happen today. We've discovered all the colors as far as we know, but imagine that, like imagine that experience. So she kind of completely sold me on this one, <laughs> on this one to be honest with you. And this one, unlike Muse, it doesn't have as much variety of textures. We're mostly getting velvets. And then we have one metallic right here and we have one top coat. So let me show you guys some close-ups of this palette. And I will also, of course, show you some daylight swatches. Going in order, we have up first, Nocturama, a velvet, love this name, a deep blackened violet. Then we have Illusionism, which is the top coat shade, transparent base with ultraviolet sparkly pearls. Then we have Mauve Decade, another velvet, a muted gray lavender. Then Faded Amethyst, a metallic, that is the one metallic shade, a taupey amethyst. Then a Victorian Trim, velvet, rich and brown vibrant mulberry. And then we have Violet Stone, which is another velvet, a pure violet. The look that I created with with myth is much more smoky, much more glamorous. I couldn't help myself, guys. So let's dive into the look that I created with myth. First, I went into the shade Move Decade and I applied that all over the crease. This is a good like medium tone shade that I think will show up on most skin tones. Then I dipped into the metallic shade called Faded Amethyst and I applied that all over the lid. Then I applied Victorian Trim to the outer lid. This one is pretty bright. It is a bright, like she said, vibrant mulberry. And it kind of reminds me of one of the shades from the Natasha Denona My Dream palette. So we will do a comparison with 
with that a little bit later. This one could be a little bit intimidating, I will be honest. So I'm using a fluffy brush to really blend it out. And it really does, it blends out pretty easily. It's pretty easy to control this color. I then went into the other deep purple shade, which is called Violet Stone. And I applied that to the outer V. Once again, you don't have to go this deep. You don't have to go this smoky. You could kind of stop at any point. But I know, especially for those of you of darker skin tones, you want to see how you can build up some of these shades. And I definitely think that you can. So I created some more depth with Violet Stone. Then, you know, we got to go into Nocturama. And I use this to apply even even more depth along the lash line and moving up into kind of the outer view. I want to create a little bit more of like a winged shape. Then I dipped into Mauve Decade and Violet Stone and I applied those to the lower lash line to kind of match up the look on the bottom to what I did on the top. Finally, I went into the top coat shade, which is called Illusionism, and I applied that to the center of the lid with a finger. I definitely think using a finger is probably the way to go. Like we learned before, this is going to have a very transparent base. It's not going to add any color. It's just a hint of spark. And when I say a hint, I mean a hint. It really doesn't add too, too much. It's more of like when you just blink your eye and you get that little like flicker of light. It's not going to be as bold as some of the other shades that I'm going to go through in this review. I also applied that shade to the inner corner of the eye for just a little bit of brightness. Then I applied some dark purple Chanel eyeliner. I will link the one that I used down below. It's perfect for any purple look. I also used that deepest shade Nocturama to blend the shadow out to get more of like a softer smoke. I put on some mascara and this is the final look with myth what do you guys think how did i do how did i handle the bright purples in this palette so comment down below and let me know what you think of this look with myth finally we have what i think is the most popular palette just based off of your comments on instagram and here on youtube this palette is called sorcery this is probably like the brightest most colorful palette that she came out with out of the five this one is inspired by medieval tales and legends sorcery is a story of the magicians fairs and fantasy of the middle ages and unlike myth which has a lot of velvet shades this is kind of the opposite this has a lot of metallic shades so you get four metallics right here you get this really cool luminous shade and then you also get a seamless matte this is the only palette out of the three that I got that has a seamless matte so that's the color that I'm using to kind of judge the formula a bit. The other two palettes that I didn't pick up, Cinnabar and Vega, I believe they are called, they have more seamless mattes. So just kind of calling that out. Not every palette has every single formula. Let's take a look at some close-ups and also some daylight swatches of this palette. Going in order once again, we first have Troubadour, that seamless matte, a deep inky teal. Then we have Grotto, a metallic, a rich emerald green. Then we have Madrigal, another metallic, blackened antique green gold. Mercurial, which is that loose Luminous shade. This is the coolest shade. It is a prismatic green to heather duochrome. It is absolutely stunning. And then we have Mage, a metallic pale silvery sage green gray with icy blue, pink, gold, and green pearls. Wow, that is a mouthful. I don't know if I see all of those colors in there, but I'll go with it. And then we have Swan Song, the last metallic, a rich sapphire blue. Let's dive into sorcery so I can tell you guys how I got this look today. The first thing that I did is I dipped into Grotto. There really are not a lot of options for mattes in this palette. So I like to just go straight into the metallic shades and you'll see how I soften these up a little bit later. Next up, I went into Madrigal. That is the metallic kind of gold green black shade. And I apply that on the inner lid and also kind of along the inner corner. Then I dipped into Mage and I applied that along the lower lash line. I wanted to keep the lower lash line a little bit lighter and brighter so that this look doesn't come across too heavy and too smoky. Then I dipped into the blue, which is called Swan Song, and I applied that on the outer lid. And I'm using a Angie Hot and Flashy Shimmer Brush. It's a synthetic brush, and it's really great for kind of laying on these shimmers because don't forget, these, like, pretty much most of the formulas are very creamy to the touch. So I think going in with synthetic brushes and really laying the color down that's how you're gonna get the best payoff then I went in with the shade Troubadour that is the one seamless matte that is in the palette with a little Sonia G brush and I'm just adding a little bit of depth very controlled definition right where I want it mostly in the outer corner and then I'm also using powder this is a quick tip if you want to soften up the look if you're using these more high shine metallic go into like a transparent powder or just a pressed powder I like to use the one that I have from Charlotte Tilbury with a little blending brush and I just blend 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 all around the edges and that's how you're going to get this more diffuse kind of blown outlook that I have today. Then the moment we've all been waiting for, I went into the shade Mercurial. That is the 
luminous duo chrome this is a very pretty shade i very much appreciate that we have at least one stunner shade in this palette where you can take the look and really really glitz it up you can apply this with your finger for a little bit more impact but i'm also using that angie hot and flashy brush and it works perfectly for really laying that down right in the center of the lid it's absolutely gorgeous lastly i applied some navy blue liner i also used the shade troubadour to blend that out just a little bit i popped on some mascara and this is the final look i should also mention that i'm wearing the matching lipstick in sorcery which i'll do an application for in just a second i think that she created these colors to kind of go well together and they definitely do in kind of a moody like you know witchy kind of way comment down below let me know how you think i did let me know which of these three looks you like the best. Before we dive into the meat of this review and I give you my final thoughts, I do want to go through the lipsticks real quick. I did pick up two of these. These are not new formulas. These are the True Velvet Lipsticks and I gotta tell you, these are like top three lipstick formulas for me. They're so elegant. I love the packaging. I'll show you guys a close-up. And these reach over $36. They're very expensive, but at this point, I almost collect these and I have kind of like a Lisa Eldridge lip wardrobe on my makeup vanity. I have really bright ones. I have more subdued nude ones. I just love them. I love kind of shopping through my stash and finding the perfect color. And she definitely sold me on these ones. So let me show you the two that I picked up. The first one is called Velvet Duchess. And it says here, a clear, clean, deep garnet red, so sumptuous that it's almost scandalous. So the reason that she sold me on this is because this is not supposed to be that bright, like bluish toned velvet ribbon type of red. I don't own velvet ribbon, but I've seen a lot of swatches and applications of that. That one is brighter. And personally, while I pretty much love every lip color, let's be honest, and I do love that velvet ribbon tone, I specifically really have a soft spot for true reds that are just a bit deeper, like just a step deeper, like that like that red carpet, red velvet cupcake kind of red, old Hollywood glamour, and that is what this gives me. Is it the most unique shade of all time? No, I think I have a couple that probably come close to it, but it is a really beautiful color. So I wanted to show it to you guys what it looks like on my skin tone, what it looks like on my lips. And then of course, I also have Velvet Sorcery. This is the one that I'm wearing today. This one is more brownie in nature. It says on the website, this bewitching medium dusky clay rose borrows a little cool toned mauve magic from the 90s, the indie it girl of the true velvets. This is definitely a Sophia shade. I love moody brownie types of colors, especially in the fall and winter. Winter. And like I said before, I think that this lipstick pairs really well with the Sorcery eyeshadow palette if you're looking for, you know, an eyeshadow and a lipstick combo to go together, maybe for you or maybe for a gift. Are you still with me, friends? I hope that all those swatches and the demos were helpful for you. Now I'm going to get into my final thoughts. This is really going to be where I tell you guys what I think of this formula, what are my personal thoughts, and also what are some of the considerations I think you need to have with each of the palettes and with the formula. I do just want to get out of the way before we dive into the eyeshadow, what I think of the lipsticks. I think the lipsticks are beautiful. Like I mentioned, love this formula. I'm already really familiar with this formula, so I feel comfortable recommending it. It's beautiful. I would say my favorite is probably Velvet Sorcery, the one that I'm wearing today, because I think it's a little more unique than Velvet Duchess. Although Velvet Duchess, if you don't have a red from Lisa Eldridge, then I think this one would be good. I think if you want something brighter, go for Velvet Ribbon. If you want a true red that's a bit deeper, then go with Velvet Duchess. So those are my thoughts on the lipsticks. Now I'm gonna spend the rest of the time talking about the eyeshadow palettes, which is what I think you guys are more interested in. First, I'm gonna talk about each of the formulas that she introduced with these palettes. And then I'm gonna talk about specifically each palette, the color story in its totality, if that makes sense. So we're gonna start off with the matte formula. The first thing that I wanna call out, and I know I only have one seamless matte, which is in this palette. It's the one right here, which is called Troubadour. I can't tell the difference between the seamless matte and the velvet. I really can't. Like I've, I've sat here trying to, you know, swatch on my hand and kind of like creepily, you know, rub my finger in all the, all the palettes. And I'm like, I just don't see the difference. That's okay with me. It's okay with me, but I just want to call it out. I don't really see the difference. I would love to hear from some of you that picked up Vega or Cinnabar. Do you think it seems different in those palettes? Because those are the palettes that have more of the seamless matte. So I'm just going off of what I have for you guys here today. So forgive me. I do think that this formula lives up to Lisa's description of it. It doesn't give any fallout, which is really great. Like you get no 
fall out. I do think it also is pretty forgiving on the lids. And you get a decent amount of pigment, but it's still pretty blendable. You might have to work it a little bit, but I feel like because it's creamy, especially for someone who might be I don't know, a little bit of a beginner or maybe you're intimidated by bright colors. It doesn't go all over the place when you put it on your face. You can take a little pencil brush and almost draw it on and then just blend it into place. But just be patient, focus on the blending. And then I think at the end of the day, you get a very soft touch, soft velvety type of look. So that's key. It does have a very specific finish. Now, the other thing that I wanted to say about the mattes is that the formula from my observations, I, I did a lot of swatching last night, all right, guys? It's pretty much exact to the Natasha Denona Cream to Powder Matte Formula. It's almost pretty much exact to the Tom Ford Eye Color Creme formula. So if you guys like that formula, you probably are really gonna like these mattes. In fact, let me show you guys a close up. This is what I like to do if you're new here. I show you how it's the same. So here you can see a swatch of one of the Lisa Eldridge Velvets. Then here you see one of the Natasha Denona Cream to Powder shades. And then below it, I have the Tom Ford Color Creme. I know that the colors here are not perfect between all three of the swatches, but trust me, the formula is. And overall, I think I do like these mattes. I thought they were very easy to work with. Like I said, no fallout. I do hear sometimes people have trouble with the Tom Ford or the Natasha Denona. So if you don't like those, I really don't think that you should buy probably from the Lisa Eldridge line because it really sounds like that velvet formula is kind of that's like the signature formula that she's really excited about, or at least that's, that was kind of my takeaway from her reveal video. When people tell me they have troubles with those types of shadows, I usually say do not use a sticky primer. Powder your lids so you have a nice smooth base to lay that creamy powder on top of because otherwise it's gonna get patchy and it's gonna kind of stick and clump into place. So that is my tip for you. But overall, I like the mattes. I think they're pretty good. They're not gonna have as much depth and impact as like a Pat McGrath, but I think that they are still buildable for all skin tones. Now let's get into the metallic. So we have the metallic formula and we have the luster formula. I only have one luster formula and it is the shade Taffeta Fan, which is here in the Muse palette. And I can kind of tell the difference between them. I, I can tell, I can tell the difference. I think that the luster shades, they're a little bit creamier and they are gonna be a little bit more foily because the pearls in there are a little bit more finely milled. In general, both the metallics and the lusters, they're very creamy to the touch. I think they're very easy to apply. I think they're pretty forgiving on the eyelids as well, but they don't give the most impact. So I'm just letting you guys know that because it depends on your preference. Personally, I wish that there were more of the luster shades because I like the more foiled effect. Let me show you guys some swatches of some other luxury formulas so you guys can see where these fall on the spectrum. So in order, I have one of the Lisa Eldridge metallics. Then I have Dior. You guys are gonna notice this is the softest. Dior is not super high foiled. So Lisa Eldridge, more impactful. Then we have Charlotte Tilbury. It's definitely a little bit more foiled than the Lisa Eldridge, so keep that in mind. And right below that, I have Natasha Denona Metallic and Pat McGrath Metallic. Those are gonna be the most foiled, okay? So if you want something that has that kind of impact, I don't really think that you're gonna get it from Lisa Eldridge. I hope that this is helpful in demonstrating like where this falls because my preference doesn't really matter so much. Like I want you guys to understand is this to your preference? This video is for you, not for me. So yeah, really nice metallics, look really nice on the lid. I think they're gonna look really great on all types of skin, even mature skin or dry skin. Personally, not my favorite. I kind of want a little bit more impact. I wanna see more of the luster formula in these palettes. Now we're gonna get into more of the topper shades. We have the luminous formula and we have the top coat formula. Starting off with the luminous, remember, this is the semi-transparent base, kind of like a sparkly, wet look. And with this, I'm a little confused, friends, because I have two of these shades. The first one is this one, Love in Venice from the Muse palette. And then the other one is that fantastic shade Mercurial from the Sorcery palette. And like, they have very, very different payoff. The one in the Muse palette, it seems like a totally different formula. It is very soft. And I really wanted Love in Venice to have more pop and sparkle. I think I would love the Muse palette a lot more if it had it. The one that's in the Sorcery palette, I mean, you can see right here, it's very glittery. It has very good payoff. Does it have a wet look? I think you could argue that it does. Actually, let me show you some close-ups of swatches of some other similar formulas that you guys wanted comparisons with. So first up here, we have Mercurial. Then we have Love in Venice. So you guys can see clear difference between the two of them. Then we have one of the astral shades from the Pat McGrath Subliminal Palette. This 
you know, I think that these give a very similar effect. However, the Pat McGrath ones, they're a little bit more glittery and they're also a baked formula. So if you want that kind of impact, I think you can actually get something very similar from Mercurial. But with the Lisa Eldridge shadows, what's kind of nice and what I think a lot of you will like who don't really like to do the glitter is that because these are creamy, they cling to the lid a little bit more and they're not as chunky and they don't give as much sort of fallout and a glittery effect compared to the Pat McGrath shadows, if that makes sense. Like I think that the ones in the Lisa Eldridge palettes are a little bit more approachable for a certain type of consumer that likes more of a subdued effect. And then returning back to the swatches, you'll also see below the Pat McGrath subliminal swatch. This is from Danessa Myricks. This is called Martian, and this is in the Lightwork Volume 3, the mini Volume 3 rather. These shadows, like they're smooth velvet duochrome. These have more of a base. They're more of like a true shimmery, foily metallic as opposed to like a glittery shade. And then finally we have a Wayne Goss shade. This is the sparkly shade from the Smoky Quartz palette. I wanted to show you this because I think that Wayne Goss does the super sophisticated sparkly wet look eye in a really nice and chic way. I think that here it's a little bit it's a little bit more like sophisticated if that makes sense. It's a little bit more finely milled and I also think that the makeup by Mario ones are very close to this as well. So I think that Wayne Goss and Mario they do a much better job in getting like the wet look but that being said I think that the shimmers from Lisa are also still beautiful. And then finally we have the top coat formula. I only have one. It's here in the Myth palette. It's this one, which is called Illusionism. And ah, I feel like I could have done without this. I kind of feel like that shade almost ruins this palette because if this had been one of the, what are they called? The Luminous Formula, the Luminous Formula that I just talked about. If this was like Mercurial, but the same like pretty soft duochrominess, I think I would like this palette more. Like this just doesn't really give that much. It's like, just like a little like, just a little bit of glitter. It's really not that much. And so I'm kind of like, all right, well, it's in the palette. I paid $68. I want a little bit more, but that is just my preference. Showing you guys something for comparison here. I have the topper shade that is in the Guerlain Majestic Rose palette. It has more payoff. It has more sparkle. I much prefer this because it really adds that beautiful shiny glint to the eye. I also added in another swatch from the Isamea Industrial palette. I think this as well, like a little more of a sheen, a little more impact. That's kind of what I go for. And then lastly, I have another comparison. Once again, from the Danessa Myricks Mini Lightwork Volume 3. This is Strawberry moon. And yeah, I think that the shades here are very similar, but when I put the Danessa Myricks on, it's just so much more impactful. I just want a little bit more impact from the top coat shades. Maybe not what Lisa Eldridge had designed them for, but like this is just, you know, my spicy take. Now let's dive into each of the color stories. I'm going to let you know what I think of each palette, and I do have a couple of comparisons to show you all that you requested on my Instagram. So the first one we're going to talk about, of course, is Muse. I think that this one is good if you want a really soft look. It's the only one of the five that gives you a very natural look. We don't have another like soft neutral palette that's in this holiday collection. I also think this is good if you're somebody that you prefer a good mix of finishes because we have some of the velvets, we've got the metallics, we also have the luminous formula. So you kind of get a little bit of everything, which I think is nice. I think the biggest call out here is that this is so similar to like anything from Charlotte Tilbury. I feel like that's the element in the room here that this looks exactly like Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk or at least pretty similar. I'll show you guys a side-by-side -side of Muse up against the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk and also Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Dreams. Very similar tones. Charlotte Tilbury, you know, maybe a little bit more nude as opposed to pink leaning. I'll show you guys some swatches of what it looks like up against the Pillow Talk Dreams. You can pretty much dupe this palette. And then if I added more swatches from the regular first Pillow Talk palette, you can essentially dupe it. So undertone slightly different, but honestly very similar. And the Charlotte Tilbury formula, it's a little bit more pigmented, a little bit more like foily and impactful. So if that's too much for you, this might be a good, you know, softer alternative. You guys also requested a comparison up against the Natasha Denona Retro palette. I think 
that these, you know, they do have some similarities, but I think at the end of the day, the Natasha Denona Retro Palette, it just leans very mauve. And so, I, and this one from Lisa Eldridge leans more pink. I also think that somebody who wants a palette that big might not overlap with the same consumer that wants a nice little compact six pan palette. And I didn't film these comparisons, but I feel like people always ask me about Patrick Ta and Guerlain Majestic Rose. I don't think that those palettes are similar to this. Patrick Ta is super duper glittery, not for the same type of person that likes this. And then Majestic Rose, the tones are a little bit different. And the Guerlain formula is more of that soft airbrush baked type of formula. So all in all, what do I think of Muse? I think this is going to be very accessible and a lot of people are going to like this. I think it's a beautiful soft palette. For me, it's extremely redundant. Like I did not need to pick up this palette. I was kind of just curious what this would be like. I bought one for my mom and I know that she's going to love it. I'm going to give it to her for Christmas with the Muse lipstick. I'm very excited to give it to her. So you know, this, this isn't a bad palette. It's just for me, if I had seen this in store and swatch it in store, I probably wouldn't have picked it up. And I really, really wanted the shade Love in Venice to be sparklier and like more impactful and just give a little bit of glitz and glam, especially from a holiday collection. So for me, it's eh, but in general, is it a good palette? Yeah. Now for the Myth palette. So unlike Muse, where I don't think you get a lot of depth and I kind of question whether or not that one's gonna work for deeper skin tones, you get a lot more depth with this palette because you have so many of the velvet matte that being said, if you don't like that cream to powder formula, this is the worst one out of the three to pick up. I do not think you are going to like this. And you do have to consider the fact that like these two mattes, they are pretty bright. You need to like bright royal purple to pick this up. For me, like I said, I wanted the top coat to be a little bit more impactful. And the fact that it doesn't have that also kind of makes this palette not super worth it for me because I already have like purple mattes and that kind of stuff in my collection. There really is no like stunna shade in this palette. The metallic shade is nice, but it's also a little bit on the deeper side of the spectrum for my skin tone. So I don't get as much luminosity. I kind of think that every time I use this palette it is going to be a little bit more of like a darker moodier type of look because I don't get much from the top coat shade and because this shade which is faded amethyst like I said it's a little bit more medium on my skin tone. I don't have that Tom Ford color creme violet sateen palette but if you picked up that palette I don't think you really need to get this one. I feel like there's a lot of similarities there. Some comparisons that I do have for you up first I have the Natasha Denona My Dream palette and the reason that a lot of people suggested this comparison is because a couple of the shades here definitely are similar like a lot of the matte shades those royal purple matte shades do have some similarities in general the Natasha Denona palette it has a lot more browns on the other side of the palette so they don't really match up they're not an exact dupe and you also really cannot dupe that faded amethyst shade that is in the myth palette next we have a comparison with the Natasha Denona retro palette I don't really think though these are that similar the biggest thing here is that the retro doesn't have any royal purples so if you don't have any royal purples it's really not that comparable. I also received a couple of requests to compare up against Dior Tutu. I thought this was a very good comparison request, although I don't think that the tones are exactly the same. I can see where people were going with this. I think the biggest thing is that Dior, the formula is just so soft and these tones are very soft. So if you're looking for something that is a little bit more satin, very soft, very ethereal, then Dior Tutu would be the better option. Now we have one of my favorite purple palettes. This is from Viseart and this is the Paris It's palette. I know that these are not the same because you don't get the royal purples here. You get more eggplanty purples. And what I really like about this is that you get a good mix of those deep moody purples and blues and you get to juxtapose them against bright metallics that have a little bit more luminosity and that's that's just kind of an example of what I was looking for more so with this palette. But Obviously, you're not getting that like royal purple tone from the Viseart one. Another one that nobody thought of but I found was the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz Palette. There's actually more shades in here that are similar than you would think. I was able to dupe the first four shades. Unfortunately, there are no like royal mattes in the Huda Palette. But if you were looking for something that was similar tones, but you weren't really into like the big two bright shades that are in the Myth Palette, then the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz has some similar ones. I was really racking my brain last night because I kept trying to find a dupe for faded amethyst and I just couldn't. I was like, it's gonna come to me. And then in my sleep, does anybody else dream about makeup? I remembered the Bridgerton palette. I think that this is the first one and this is not exact. I'll show you guys right here. 
They're not exact, but they give a very similar effect. So yeah, I just want to show that to you guys as well, because I think that like these shades right here, you can get something very similar, but yeah, you're not really getting the deep royal, you know, aubergine kind of colors that you get in the Myth Palette. So yeah, final thoughts on the Myth Palette. I thought this one was going to be more unique. I definitely don't think that it is. I think that if you have the Natasha Denona palette, if you have the Tom Ford palette, if you have the Viseart palettes, I don't think this one is really necessary. I wanted a little bit more sparkle, wanted a little bit more brightening effect from it. For me, the standout part of this palette are the velvet mattes. And so if that is something that you like, then and that's what is going to make this palette worth it for you. And then finally, we have the Sorcery palette. This one is my favorite. This one is the most unique. It is the most fun to play with. This is the one to me that screams holiday. I feel like this is the one that is the most worth picking up looking at the whole collection because the other two color stories that I didn't get, they're not that groundbreaking. The biggest thing to consider here is that it's mostly shimmers and then the one matte that you get is Troubadour, which is that super dark, deep, teal kind of matte. And so you have to ask yourself if that's the kind of color story that you like. Is that the way that you like to do your makeup? Or do you like to sort of build up your makeup with a lot of mattes like you would do maybe with Myth and then just kind of go in with a little bit of shimmer in the center? I don't mind the lack of mattes here. I really like the look that I came up with here. And you can definitely use any of these shimmers as a one and done. You don't have to do something as dramatic as I did today. You do not need to use all of the shades. And I do like the matte that is in this palette even though I can't tell the difference between this and the velvet formula, I still really like it. Are these metallics as foiled as Pat McGrath? No, they're not. Are they as insane as Danessa Myricks? No, they are not. But I think they're really pretty. And I do appreciate the fact that Lisa included Mercurial, which is like that really beautiful stunner shade because I have the option of kind of taking it up a notch. So let's look at a couple comparisons for this one. I know that this one is harder to do, but I do have some similar things in my collection. So the first one that I want to show you, the first thing I thought of was Guerlain Mystic Peacock. This is definitely a different formula. As I talked about before, it's more of that airbrush kind of formula, but we do get like the blue and greeny tones. I'll show you guys a side by side of the two blues so you can kind of get a better sense of the difference between the formulas. I think you get good color impact. It's just like a different experience. Experience. Next up, I have a comparison with Pat McGrath Decadence Mothership. We get some similar tones in here, like not every single tone matches up, but when you look at the swatches side by side, you definitely can get a similar vibe. I think the Pat McGrath ones are a little bit more pigmented, but some of you guys will like how, you know, a little bit softer the ones are from Lisa Eldridge. I also have this throwback from Pat McGrath. This is Nocturnal Nirvana, and this is one of those palettes that came with four Blitz Astral shades. And I don't know, I just kind of got similar vibes from this. So I wanted to show it to you all because I know some of you guys have this if you're a big Pat McGrath collector. And once again, you know, the formula is different. It's more of a baked formula. I think the experience of using these is a little bit different. I do think that the Lisa Eldridge one is probably a lot more user and beginner friendly. Next up, I have the Isamea Industrial Palette. I definitely thought of this because this palette, it just has so many cool textures to play with. So I wanted to show you guys some comparisons. There are definitely some similar tones, but I think with the Isamea palette, like there's there's more shade. So there's more room for artistry and experimentation. It's a little bit grungier. I definitely think it's for a different customer. But if you're someone like me, where you like a lot of different formulas, you like Ismaya and you like Lisa Eldridge, you know, I think that you're gonna like both of these palettes. But if you have the Ismaya ones, like, do you really need this one? Do you really need it? And then finally, I know I keep talking about this palette. This is the one from Danessa Myricks, the Mini Lightwork Volume 3. And I thought about this one because specifically the shade Martian, which which is that soft seafoam green duochrome. That kind of reminded me of the beautiful green that we have in here, which is called Grotto. So I think some of the colors here, they have a little bit of a similar vibe. I think the Danessa Myricks, I just like that smooth, velvety, sheeny formula a little bit more. This is a duochrome palette, so it's not for everybody. But I think, you know, if you were thinking of getting that one, I think you can get some similar looks with it. So final thoughts on Sorcery. This is my favorite one. This is the best one that I tried. I think the fact that there's more 
metallics to work with is more to my preference. I like the seamless matte. I like every formula that's in here. Would I like the metallics to be a little bit more foiled? Probably, but that's okay because I have the gorgeous mercurial shade in there. So out of the three, this one is my pick. So friends, what do I think of these palettes? I think in general, just kind of taking my preference out of it and looking at it, from the perspective of the customer base, I think that they're pretty well done. I think that the formula is really well thought out. She's so extremely thoughtful with all of her releases. I think that for her customer base, she's done a really good job. And this can be tricky when you are a makeup artist launching your own brand and you are very artistic, but your customer base might not necessarily be. I've heard some of you say in the comments, like I'm not a supermodel. I'm not walking down a runway. I'm not gonna do this look and that look. I want more wearable natural kinds of looks. I think that Lisa Eldridge has done a pretty good job here making something that's still inspired. You still have some room for artistry. You still get something a little bit artistic without making it too crazy. And she really thought about a formula that I think would be very user-friendly with her customer base, something that's gonna look good for people who are in their 20s and something that's gonna be look good and easy to use for those of us who have more mature skin. I'm 31, by the way, and I have very dry eczema-prone eyelids. So I want something that's gonna be easy to use as well. As you guys saw in the comparisons, this isn't gonna be as foily as some of the other luxury formulas that are on the market, but I think she's kind of positioning herself in there along with like, you know, maybe Wayne Goss, maybe Tom Ford. And I think that that's pretty smart. I also think, you know, the packaging is very pretty. I think a lot of people are gonna like this. I think that these are very giftable, as I mentioned. Like I told you, I bought, I bought the Muse one, I bought another one for my mom, gonna give it to her with the lipstick. So overall, I think that this release was really well thought out and well done. But that being said, if you are one of those people that's like looking at my swatches on Instagram, or you looked at the looks that I created, today and you're like wow like I want to pick up more colors I need every single color let's pump the brakes let's pump the brakes because while that is all good I do think you also have to consider the fact that these color stories they aren't super groundbreaking like when I saw the color stories I was excited because it was a new release but I wasn't the most excited for these color stories. I already have a lot of these color stories in my collection and I know that a lot of you do as well. Also with the formula, while it is good, it's not revolutionary, it's not groundbreaking. Like it's not that different from other things that I already have from other brands, which is totally fine because sometimes people like this format. They like the packaging, they like the layout, they like the different combination of finishes, they like the color stories. So it's totally okay to have similar formats formulas but just remember like this isn't something groundbreakingly new from Lisa Eldred. It doesn't really make sense to get anything from her line if you don't like that cream to powder formula. If you have Natasha Denona or if you have the Tom Ford color creme you didn't like it probably don't spend your money on these. I don't really like either of these palettes all that much and something that I also forgot to mention is that I used this one and I wore it yesterday. I had the worst eye irritation this morning and I'll have to try it out a little bit more to make sure that it was this palette but a lot of times purple shades irritate my eyes and I had to flush my eyes out so much this morning take allergy medicine and all that kind of stuff just to try and get like the redness to go away you guys can kind of tell that my eyes are still extremely irritated so yeah I'm not like running back to these two palettes by any means the last sort of consideration or con is that I do think that these are overpriced when you take a look at the amount of product that you're getting you really don't get that much for your money $68 price point that is a above that of like a Dior Quint, which is $62, and you get a lot more product in that. You're also getting pretty much the same amount as a Charlotte Tilbury quad. You do get two more shades, but you get less of each shade and it's a lot more. Those are about $55 if I'm not mistaken. My guess is that what's contributing to the price is number one, the packaging. The packaging is better, so maybe you're willing to pay for that. And the other thing is, you know, Lisa Eldridge is just a smaller brand, so she may not be able to afford giving you that cheaper price. It's something you have to make up your mind. Are these worth it? That's why I try and show you the most realistic depiction and let you guys know my preference. All of that being said, my final recommendation is get the sorcery palette if this is something that you go for and the biggest tip that I have is check the finishes that are in each palette just given everything I've told you today figure out what finishes you think you're gonna like and then whenever she comes out with more palettes because she will she will come out with more color stories check and see on the back 
what finishes you're going to get because that's going to dictate whether or not I buy it. If there's more metallic and luster shades, if I'm getting more of the luminous shades, that's what I'm going to be going for. I like more of that high shine. So that's my biggest tip to you guys. Don't go crazy. You don't need to go crazy and buy all of these. She's going to come out with more. Don't get trapped into like the inspiration and the romanticism of it all than the story behind each palette. So watch the reviews, figure out what you like. Don't go crazy. Don't waste your money. Let's be smart with our money. And that's pretty much all I have to say about that. <gasps> I know that that was a lot so forgive me I know this was probably a pretty long review but if you are still with me what I would love is for you to sound off in those comments down below let me know what you think was this helpful did I talk you out of things did I talk you into things at the end of the day it's totally fine whichever way you want to go I would love to hear what your eyeshadow preference is what you think of this release and if you have gotten your palettes already which some of you have some of you haven't let me know in the comments down below what you think of these I would love to know because your opinion is just as good as mine if you like this video please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up it really helps me out subscribe if you haven't already and with that friends i hope that you are having a fantastic day and i will see you in my next one goodbye